Greetings everyone, I am Lotus Prince, and for this Let's Play, we are going to tackle Corpse Party Blood Drive. It's the end of an era. The end of a kind of trilogy. I've been waiting for this game for a very long time. Corpse Party was a hell of an experience. Book of Shadows had a horrible, horrible cliffhanger that directly said, wait for Blood Drive to see what happens. It drove me insane, and now we're finally here. At long last, we get to see where this goes. Now, one thing I should point out to you, this is the end of a kind of trilogy, so it would behoove you to know what's going on. I really, really recommend that you play the first Corpse Party, watch my Let's Play, watch somebody else's Let's Play. You're going to need to know who the characters are and what's going on in order to understand kind of what's happening with this game, because they don't explain very much who the characters are. For Book of Shadows, it's mostly a what-if scenario. Only the prologue and epilogue are canon. So once again, you can look those up, and I let's play that game as well, or someone else's let's play, play it yourself. But the very end, especially, of Book of Shadows is relevant to Blood Drive. Although, Blood Drive pretty much explains what happened there. Not in every last little bit of detail, but it goes over it enough. Now, I've said twice so far, that Blood Drive is part of a, kind of, trilogy. Well, as it turns out, there actually is a third game before this one. This is kind of the fourth game in the series. The third game was, believe it or not, a silly romantic spin-off called Sachiko's Hysteric Birthday to You. Number two, letter U. It was only released in Japan, and from what I've gathered, Exceed is not going to bring that one over because it's obscure within a relatively obscure series. It would cater to an extremely niche audience, so we're not going to get that one. And believe it or not, despite what I just said about being a parody or ro romantic spin-off, it's canon. At least, at least I know some of it's canon. Now, the good news is that it's not really relevant to the plot almost at all of Blood Drive. Apparently, there are some references in Blood Drive to Hysteric Birthday, but I don't think you really need to understand them to know what's going on. From what I've heard, if you don't know it, then you'll never even know there was a reference. And if you are aware of the reference that's being made, then it might just be one of those, ah, I see what you did there moments, but otherwise, there weren't plot elements, I don't think, that we just missed when we're playing Blood Drive. So that's good. So this is basically the conclusion of a trilogy in the West, but I don't know if it's a word, but a quadrilogy, kind of, in Japan. But again, Hysteric Birthday is not crucial for this. So as far as hardcore plot goes, we're caught up. This game ought to be interesting. I mean, check the back of the box. Return to the twisted world of Heavenly Host Elementary in a vain effort to reclaim friends who have perished within. We're going back. I'm not sure I like that it says a vain effort. I hope that's not a spoiler, because I don't want to know that we try and fail. We'll see where this goes. Dodge and disarm traps, hide from evil entities, and more. Oh boy. Now there is one other thing about this box I particularly like. Take a look at the artwork. Here we have uh, someone's terrified bloodshot eye with a symbol in it, this weird stone on the upper right. That's the basic art for the game. Personally, I prefer the original Japanese art, but fortunately, as Exceed is wants to do, they provided us with a reversible cover, so we actually do have the Japanese art. Uh, believe it or not, the art itself is kind of a spoiler for the first game, so if you have not played the first game, again, seriously, look into that. I'll wait. Okay, how about that game, huh? Depressing, wasn't it? But still so good. Now, as for that alternate art, we have two things going on. The back of the box is uh, Ayume looking rather distraught. Not surprising, considering she seems to be sort of the main protagonist of this game. She was very important in Book of Shadows. And uh, as was Naomi. We'll get to more of Naomi in a second. She was the person on the main cover. As for the front cover of the game, though, can you imagine seeing this on store shelves? It's the class photo, but a couple people are conspicuously blacked out. You know, it's not very often that a game punches you in the gut before you even play it. Leave it to Corpse Party. 
I think I've stalled enough. We know who uh, did not make it back from Heavenly Host in that first game. We're going to see what we can do about that. Course Party Blood Drive. Let's go crazy. Well, I've played the first game, I've played the second. Let's go. Exceed games. Ah, <sighs> mages five PB. No oh, division. Grease, grease, of course. DWE Unity. Oh, it's fiction. Wow, I had no idea. Also, I didn't say it the first time. That's a creepy face. Oh. Jeez, look at that. Well. Let's go. I elect to choose chapter zero. A faint light. I get the feeling I know what's happening right now, actually. I was right. Welcome to the end of Book of Shadows. It had been two months since the Book of Shadows incident, Really? So what did, we, what did we just walk out? We went home? I'd been critically wounded by the blowback from the sorcery I'd involved myself with, but Nakashima was there to carry me out from the crumbling Shinazaki estate. So I guess I am Ayumi, as far as this narration goes, and the, if the Shinozaki estate crumbled, like, like, did we win? What is this third game, then? Trying to pick up the pieces? The two of us were picked up on the side of the old mountain road and rushed to a hospital, where I was restored to stable condition. The grimoire, responsible for so much of the horror everyone had been through, the Book of Shadows, was buried in the rubble of the estate when its roof collapsed. Wait, 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 wait. If they knew that, then what the hell are they trying to do that for? Are they out of their freaking minds? Ah, so we actually broke the curse. 
So now the Sachiko charm does what everyone assumed it would do in the first place. Nothing except be a symbolic gesture of friendship. Interesting, so we kind of, I don't know, save the world? Eh? Prevented future disasters anyway. Ugh. Oh, this is the very beginning of Book of Shadows. Natsumi is Naomi's mother. Naomi? Naomi? Naomi, no! You know, I have to say, the uh, the syncing of the text scroll and the voice, pretty damn good job. Like, they stop at the same time. Yeah, they expertly synced this. I was wondering why there was no text scroll option when I gave uh, the game a first run through just to see how things would work. I was like, why can't I just make the text scroll faster? But it's synced to the voices. I can press X to make it just cut to the end, but that's really cool. Unbelievable. So of course, when the text is scrolling for me, when it's time for me to read, I can press X to jump ahead if, if I read too fast, but Nice. Shut Hey, Satoshi, you're back. The only glimpse we got of him in Book of Shadows was, uh, an incidental, almost cameo to Miss Yui's scenario. We didn't really watch him do of uh, anything in Heavenly Host. Hey, it's the rest of us! You'd think Naomi would be the one to say that, because she was going insane in the beginning of Book of Shadows. Like, she should talk to these four people, well, these three plus Ayumi, the one we're playing as right now. Huh, with this 3D we could get more animation going. Wait, am I playing? Oh, whoa! Crazy. So do I just talk to him? Whoa. I'm gonna have to get used to this gameplay. This is bizarre. Course party changes it up each time. Oh man. Okay, 
So I guess I just go in unless I keep... Why am I allowed to go this far? <laughs> Alright, I guess I'll go in the school. This is weird! Well, I guess if everything were cured, you wouldn't have a game, would we? Oh yeah, a random student. <laughs> I could just imagine, like, ooh, I found the new thing. The double Sachiko Ever After charm. Let's try that. Wow. That door was just one frame. It's open. Mama. Just a pool of blood comes into the room. If the charm didn't work, then what did she do? And it's open again. Jeez! Gotta admit, didn't see that one coming. Wow! Okay! Come on! What do- what, what am I supposed to do? So never mind, I take back what I said. We still can't perform that ritual. This is pretty rocking. Oh boy. Ghosts are back. I don't know who that is. I guess this is an Ayumi game. Oh, Kazami's in the game? What? What? Oh, I'm pleased. I didn't expect that at all. Ma Mayu has a voice? It, unless, unless they're flashbacks. Maybe they're flashbacks? Because if they're back, does that imply a prestige where we could save everybody? new characters, I don't know. Oh my god, there is so much going on. This guitar reminds me of just a Guilty Gear theme. That was pretty sweet. Man, that's some prologue. Do not perform the Ever After Curse. But what are we supposed to do to bring it back? Reopen Heavenly Host and... Super curious. Ugh. 
ったく転んだ拍子に落ちていた刃物でああも大けがするなんて一体何をしていたの歩ゆみ Oh yeah, the excuse. 日の絵みたいにまた幽霊がどうのとかオカルトまがいなことをしてるんじゃないでしょうね。That's kind of funny, actually. If you recall, we did not trip on a cutting tool. We had cutting tools just fly toward us. ほっといてよもう、いつものこととはいえ、日の絵もどこへ行っているのやら。うちの娘たちは、親に心配ばかりかけて。I guess she's over Hinoe's disappearance because, yeah, she died in the real world, so nobody forgot about her. She's just dead. And I guess Ayumi hand waved her disappearance for two months. That sucks. Can you imagine if she finds out she's just missing a head? Ugh. Yeah, you may recall we feel particularly about this,、uh, particularly bad about this because Hinoe died saving us from our stupidity of kind of half assing a ritual of probably the blackest magic out there. She probably redirected the negative effects toward her to save our lives. So it's like, that is guilt and a half. In case you forgot, here we go. A massive earthquake rippled through the basement of the Shinozaki estate, leaving it teetering on the edge of collapse. Worse still, the whole place was in flames. Huh, I forgot about that part. Hinoe's lifeless body appeared as if shimmering in the fire's light, red glinting off of red round the edges of the blades that were rapidly sluicing her flesh. That's true, if the blades went to us, then they must have gone to her as well. The game didn't even show that. They danced around and through her almost whimsically, prompting unnatural gyrations throughout her body without ever letting her so much as touch the ground. And again, that would have happened to us! I grabbed onto Hinoe's body in a vain attempt to pull her to safety. Careful! Again, with the blades, and it was too late. But Hinoe refused what little strength she had left to. Oh, used what little strength she had left to push me back. I'm actually wondering if she's going to help us in this game. It, I don't know. I could distinctly hear these words in the back of my head, spoken in a soft, soothing voice. It was short lived, however, as the ceiling suddenly became webbed with cracks and fissures, and a massive beam fell from above, crushing her upper body entirely. With this, I shot to my feet and began running in circles, screaming uncontrollably. I would have run right into the rapidly spreading fire if Naomi hadn't caught me. My hands and feet were covered in red bruises and cuts from the swarm of blades that my spell had summoned. Naomi was bleeding as well, but nowhere near as badly. Yeah, one thing I neglected to mention is that you know how bad Heavenly Host was. 
In case you forgot, when we did approach the Shinozaki estate, Ayomi noted that the aura coming from it was, quote, far worse or far more intense than the Heavenly Host, and it's like, what? Again, Ayumi has kind of the gift, but she's very new at this. This is like... I, I wouldn't have trusted her older sister to do that. Like, I, Ayumi made a really dumbass mistake with this one. I was wondering that too. I don't know if she used clairvoyance or what, but I have no freaking clue how she got there and got in the house, because I think we had to put some real effort into get in, like, to pass the intimidating aura. Possibly too. We did successfully resurrect one of our friends. Kind of. You needed a photo to do that, but Mayu's photo was blacked out. So what happened? Mayu appeared with a blacked out face, and she couldn't talk, and then she exploded, and we were like, oh god, no. You'd think the last thing she'd want to see is scissors. I don't recognize the voice. There you go. With one shoe on my desk and sporting a rare open-mouthed version of a shit-eating grin, a boy wearing a black parka was somehow there in my room with that explanation. Dude, hand injuries won't kill me unless I die of blood loss. That is a fair point. <laughs> Don't see that in the game often. Oh, he's Odysseus. Cola gum? Without a word, he motioned for me to put my hand out and unceremoniously plopped a piece of 10 yen gum into it. The boy smiled with a cold yet oddly kind expression, then finally took his leave by jumping out the window. All I could do was stand there and sob, and wonder why the hell he gave me cola gum? That was really weird. Oh, this might be a first. I don't think they've really interacted outside of school. Oh, so he's not a ghost boy, he's just kind of like hanging out. <laughs> And how do I play through this game with a completely stabbed through left hand? Mr. Yama 
Miyazaki. Oh, is he the principal? Oh, Pretty high up, jeez. すごい空だな。雲が全然ない。秋晴れだな。この辺で食べよう。しかしなんか妙に軽いな、弁当箱。よしき、今日はなんだ時間あったから揚げ物にした。相変わらず何でも作れるな、お前は。オレンジは昨日の残り物とかだよ。多分。いいじゃねえかよ。この幸せもんが。That's <笑> In case you couldn't see, the note said, for bread or something, and there was just money in it. I don't recognize the voice, so let's say it's the teacher? Nope. It's Yes. <laughs> Awkward. This was our class's TA, Miss Kuon Niwa, age 24. I wonder if that's a joke, because if memory serves, Kuon is a sort of Japanese onomatopoeia for, like, bump in the night. She was an English teacher, with white hair, blue eyes, and a soft, delicate voice. That's right, because she's the one who, I guess, replaced Miss Yue. Here's a question, where would she have been if Ms. Yui stayed, you know? Is she a sorceress? What? Oh, I was waiting for to conjure it right there. <sighs> Guess I'll go buy some bread at the cafeteria or something. Okay, but you should probably hurry it up. I mean, lunch has already started, so I doubt they have a whole lot left at this point. Oh, crap, you're right. Okay, wait right here, I'll be back. Hold the circle button to sprint, yep. Sprinting drains your stamina, and if you run out completely, you won't be able to move again for a short time. That, I promise, is gonna be a problem later. Your stamina will recover whenever you're not sprinting, however, so be sure to slow down every now and again. Silent Hill, huh? Uh, whoa. Okay, I'm gonna go get some, quote, bread or something, or maybe pork cutlet on rice. We'll see if we get that big reveal, but for now, it is time to stop the installment. Well, we certainly made a lot of progress today, didn't we? We saw the beginning of the game, and I think we're still kind of seeing the beginning of the game. We're in Chapter Zero, which seems to be what's happening before the real bad stuff goes down. We're mainly focusing on Ayumi and her dealing with the consequences of Book of Shadows, but we're taking a bit of a look at Yoshiki and Satoshi now, so I guess we're establishing what the characters are doing before insanity happens. I wonder who that new character is who gave Ayumi the gum, and I bet you there's something up with Miss Kuon. We'll see. Until next time, everyone.